Hey y'all, welcome back to another episode of Adulting with Honey. I'm your host Honey and I do well uh, we're gonna cut that one there because we're gonna cut it there because we are changing the whole layout of the podcast you guys a lot is going to change so let's jump right into the update of what's going to happen to our channel moving forward so moving forward i initially had the idea of making this podcast about talking about things that they should have taught you in school but they didn't and as nice as that is it requires a lot of researching a lot of reading and uh, um if some of you guys might know this and if it is your first time here then you do not know this also so before we get anywhere further before i forget if you are watching this on youtube please do not forget to like this video do not forget to leave a comment in the comment section down below and do not forget to share it with your friends and family those three little things really mean the world to me it's free of charge it doesn't cost you anything so please do those three little things because that will help you to promote our videos to more people and that way we can grow the channel ah uh, yeah we are on our road to 5k subscribers so let's do that okay and if it is your first if you're watching the video on uh, some streaming platform please when you're done watching do not forget to rate this video okay whatever rating you do just just make sure you do it with your with your chest held high so yes rate but make sure you have your chest held high when you are rating preferably five stars but obviously um, I want you to be honest with your reading as well. So please be honest. Now that that's out of the way, what is the update going to be? So like I said earlier, initially I wanted this channel, um, I wanted this podcast to be about bringing education towards things that they should have taught you in school, but they didn't. What I came to quickly realize is that it takes a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot of time, a lot of research and I just do not have the time and energy to do that right now because of everything that I got going. I'm still working a nine to five. I still have an active YouTube channel that I want to run. And I am still busy with my masters. And there are just a lot of things that I want to do on the sites, like a few side hustle businesses that I've been doing on the site. And I just do not really have the time to do all of that. And it has kind of put me behind a lot with um, the podcast. The podcast kind of became a back banner. And for something that I'm really passionate about, I felt really guilty about it. So I decided that I am still going to be doing the podcast and still once in a while do those really well-researched videos for you guys. But um, occasionally, and maybe most of the time, I'll be there doing this type of content that I'll be doing now. So what's the new type of content that we would be doing? It's really not that far-fetched from what I had already been doing on my YouTube channel. It's very close and similar to content that I used to do and enjoy doing a very long time ago on this YouTube channel. Yes, we've been on this YouTube streets for way too long now that it really feels like it's a really long time ago since I've done this type of content. And that is just reacting to confessions, reacting to things that other people have to say. And so it's really exciting and I'm, I'm excited. So I came across a platform called Reddit and I just do not know how in my life this was not a thing that existed already. Like, why is this something new? I am really lost for words. I do not know how this is something new, something that um, didn't already exist in my life. So I came across a platform called Reddit. Most of my viewers are not aware of what Reddit is. I know this because I went on Instagram. If you're not following me on Instagram, it's at adulting with honey. Please just, please do, do, do better. Can you just go ahead and follow me on Instagram right now? If you're on if you're not already following me, please, please, 
please do better go follow me on instagram but anyways i asked the people on instagram if they have heard of reddit and if they know of it if they've used it or anything like that so i asked the family there and overwhelmingly 70 percent of the people on instagram were like what is that most people didn't know what reddit was so i wasn't alone on this one i wasn't the only person that didn't know what reddit was <clears throat> i mean i knew what reddit was i've always heard about reddit but my opinion of reddit was that it was this application for very smart people in it you know computer te computer nets uh, an application more like similar to quora or what is that thing where people basically i basically thought it was just a place where you go to search up uh, when you search for something and you know you get expert advice on that's what i thought reddit was until i myself decided to go on it and uh, well you will be surprised what i discovered there is a lot going on on reddit and some of the stories just need to make an appearance on our youtube channel on our podcast and so i've went on a rabbit hole where i've just been reading and i've been so excited about reading the stories that people are posting on reddit so we like stories okay i love stories i go from a whim story key <laughs> not me trying my attempt at africans oh wow it's street land africans please let's not judge each other most of these africans is from the street but i went on reddit and i found a lot of pages so you see how on instagram you have people that you follow with their accounts or pages that they call them accounts well on reddit we have what is called subreddit and there's a lot there is a lot that exists there so it's a platform really that has anything that you are looking for if you are going there basically for financial advice or financial tips and tricks you will find a subreddit for that if you are there for it being um you want to stay up to date with the latest news on it data science statistics whatever you are interested in geography science whatever you are interested in exist on reddit now me i'm most interested in stories because i love stories and i'm proud to say i love stories and i know most of you guys that are going to be watching this podcast or listening to this podcast also love stories and love listening to stories i mean you to please don't tell me if you're working fast why you know how tempting it is right when you see a horrible accident and you just want to see it you know it's horrible you're probably not supposed to go see it but you still want to go see it you know that feeling well i had that feeling when i was scrolling on reddit and i came across some of these platforms so there's a platform called MIV behind, you know, we are trying to be advertiser friendly. Hopefully one day this is going to blow up and we would want to make money from people <clears throat> from advertising on, on here. So we're going to try by all means to be advertiser friendly. So the platform is called MIV A behind it. Hold on and you'll be surprised by the stories people are posting there and you'll be wondering if people are actually finding their heads they are good stories that's all i can really say that's the best way i can summarize it and that's maybe my favorite page at this moment but besides that there's also like confessions there's um advice long distance relationships tips on on dating there's a lot there's a lot so uh, i came up with kind of a structure that touches on everything but also makes it fun and exciting for everyone so i think that was a long enough update let me tell you how our new structure is gonna look like how's our video structure going to look like i'm having my phone here because i'm gonna have to read from my phone so i'm sorry about that so this part, uh, podcast is really going to consist of a lot of reading and reacting like i said and the first thing that i would want to uh, the layout so this is the 
layout kind of of how our podcast is going to be so the first thing that we'll be touching on in every video will be we'll do a mini weekly life update video update so it's a personal update about myself and then from that we will move on to a question of the week which i am highly recommending that you guys please take part in this one i will read the question for you guys i'll read a few answers of people based on the question and then please relieve your answer to this question in the comment section down below um and then we will do an am i the a of the week and the next one we will do is a confession of the week and we'll also finish it off with an unpopular opinion so when it comes to if we will be doing an MI the A of the week or if we'll be doing a my conf con confession of the week or if we're going to be doing both, it will really just be determined by how long whatever post that we get to read first is and how much I'm feeling like inputting into how much opinion I have. Because I really do not want the videos or the episodes to be too long. So I'm going to try my best to time manage that so and then for each confession that we read or for each am i the a uh, that we read i will leave um i will have a ranking system and this is how our ranking system is gonna look like so we will have also this is in no particular order to say okay this is a better thing or a worse thing than the other because sometimes these stories are just horrible so it's more of a relatability scale so our relatability scale is going to be number one. Did I just read my own confession? Or did I just read my own story? And this is going to be something or a story where either I can relate to the story, I have done the same thing, or something similar has happened to me. Sometimes I'll explain, sometimes maybe I won't. It just depends on the story. But I will be honest with my reading of the story. Okay, the next ranking option is going to be what in the world did I just read? So that means it's something that I have never seen. I could never imagine is possible to happen. And, ooh, English. I could never imagine. Hey, bo. guys, disclaimer, English is not my first language. And I'm a horrible at it and this is why i'm doing this podcast is to try and improve my speaking skills so <laughs> the second ranking is going to be what on hell what on earth did i just read i can totally not relate to that so that's something that i can totally not relate to and i i just can't see how there is even a situation we are reading about and then the third ranking is going to be you need to go to jail you need to be arrested did you just confess to a crime that's what the next rating is going to be so i hope you're excited and i'm now gonna get into the video shall we let's get into the first segment of the uh of, of, of this episode which is uh, a life update so life life update guys life has been good i've been happy i've i have so much that is exciting and fun and i hate to be that person that there's so many exciting and fun things that are happening in my life right now but unfortunately i cannot share them with you guys i just can't share them it's not my story to tell the owners of the stories are not telling the stories. It's like it's things that are happening to people that are really close to me, but it's not my story to share again. And someday I will be able to share it with you guys once they have shared it themselves. But it's just not my, my story. But there's a lot of exciting new changes that are happening because of those things that I can't share. So yeah that's the life update it feels so vague trust me i know i know and i get it and i feel it as well but 
there's nothing I can do about it. It's not my story. It's not my place to share it. So that's the life update. Now onto the question of the week. So what is this week's question of the week? Question of the week is what happened to the most attractive person at your high school or college? Mm. That's an interesting. So this is some I will I'll give you guys what happened to the person in my school at the end of this video. So obviously most attractive person is going to be it's going to be what is that word? It's going to be based on my opinion who I found the most attractive and who I found the most attractive in school is not going to be who everyone else in my school found the most attractive unless you are really from one of those schools. But this was this will be obviously biased. It will be based on the opinion of the person answering the question on who they thought was the most attractive person in school. Let's read what I need to drink some water. I need some water. Mm. So someone said she married some super rich French guy. I'm American and completely disappeared. Mm. <laughs> okay that's nice someone else said housewife she married a rich older guy but not that old here's that she is content here uh here he hears yeah. here's that she is content no social media but meets up with her closest school friends often so we get her update second hint she has always been humbled and humbled and nice and looks like she is She's still, she's still that way. That's nice. Someone else said, so someone else said, the most beautiful woman in my high school class lived happily and recently got married at the, uh, for the first time at the age of 55. I mean, yeah, that's nice. <laughs> Good for her. Yeah, can y'all imagine getting married at the age of 55? I feel like that's, that would be old. But anyways, you, love finds you when it finds you. And it doesn't matter what age you are. If you ever don't ever give up on, 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 on love and don't ever settle for the little nonsense that life has to offer you with some of these people. Because it doesn't matter what age you are. If, la if love is going to find you, it will find you. Even when you are a 55 year old. Okay. So, what happened to the most attractive person in your school? Someone responded and said, um, She shockingly came out as lesbian and crushed our hearts. <laughs> yeah, <boy. laughs> Can you imagine? Can you imagine the person that you had a huge crush on in school? Turns out to be not attracted to i mean attracted to the same gender as them so if you're like a lady that's attracted to men can you just imagine the guy that you were most attracted to in school turns out to be attracted to other men but you just never knew oh yeah <laughs> i mean it's not the worst thing that could happen but it's just like ah, oh, shame that sucks not for them for me obviously <laughs> Let's see what somebody else said. Somebody else said she's a scientist who appears on various current affairs TV shows to explain science stuff. Who cute and smart. That is nice. That is nice. So, I mean, at least you get to still see your crush on TV. I mean, do you guys still like crushes? I mean, yeah, I'll tell you now about mine. What happened to the most attractive person in my school when I was at school? I'll tell you, I will tell you about it now. <laughs> and so this question of mine is going to be irrelevant because I was going to ask, do you guys think that um, a crush can die? I feel like they can. Like you can have a crush on someone in high school and once you grow up, you don't have a crush on them anymore. So yeah, I answered my question. Sorry. Oh, this one is bad. So what happened to the most attractive person in your high school? Someone responded, said, they died on an overdose of some sort. Super nice girl, cheerleader, prom queen, the whole bit. 
she was extremely popular with all groups and was genuinely a good person i still wonder why she was set it's always like that it's like the people that we think are the happiest people are always the most sad people they are always the people that are going through the most and nobody knows i feel like they overcompensate overcompensate um with happiness um, on the outside while on the inside they are really going through the most it's just a thing that i've noticed as well it's like people that are the happiest on the outside are not really that happy on the inside it's just a facade that they are putting up someone else said what happened to the most attractive person in your school this person responded shade she was voted best looking and married the guy who was voted best looking Ooh, they must be having cute babies that was 34 years ago and they are still married still good looking and just great people all around that is great that is so nice they must be having beautiful kids okay <laughs> What happened to the most attractive person in your school? I don't think this can be read on YouTube. So I'm just going to summarize it for you guys. So what happened to the hottest guy in their school is that he became a um, fairly successful dealer in college. So he was dealing drugs in college and he was dealing to his own sister. And when he was asked why he was dealing to his own sister, his response was, if I do not give her, she's not going to have money to buy it. So she's going to do as work to get it. I mean, oh, it's also mentioned that he had paid rehab for her three different times and it never worked. So he'd rather just apply to her instead. I don't know how to feel about that guys uh, I think we're gonna leave it here I mean I, I can see the logic in the in the in the in his reasoning but yeah this question almost took a 10 so we're gonna leave it there we are just gonna leave it there and we're gonna answer my what happened to the hardest person in my school so there was this guy in school that was like really hard <laughs> Well, the guy was really hot in school. And then one day, not even that long ago, I think it was like last year. You know, when it's like I had totally even forgotten that this person existed. Like, yeah, out of sight, out of mind. <laughs> and I think it was last year, if I'm not wrong, last year I was working from work. I, I, it was lunchtime. I went to go buy lunch at a shop that's close by. And he actually recognized me so he was walking to some way i'm not sure where he was walking to obviously that's his business but he recognized me and he's like hi honey and i'm like hi blank and then he's like oh how are you he stopped smiling and laughing me what i saw was bombastic I was like, what am I looking at? What, what is happening? <laughs> this can't be the same person I had a big crush on in school. There's no way. <laughs> Yo, when we were in school, this person had braces. And there's just something about braces that can really ruin your teeth. Like, there are very few of us that were lucky that didn't get their teeth ruined by braces. But then there are just some people whose teeth were horribly ruined by braces. Oh my goodness, this guy's teeth were like yellow. They looked like they are about to crack or they were cracked. Like, it just looked like he had horrible um, mouth hygiene. Like, it was just so bad. I was just like, oh my word. And he was just... He was just not giving what we saw in school, man. He had gotten darker. I mean, even in school, he had like, you know, teen, teenage pimples, but he still looked cute with his teenage pimples. But now he had like all these teenage pimples scarring. 
his face just looked so different. He was just not the cute guy that we saw in, that I used to see in school anymore. Where he is now in life, I really do not know. I have since then ran into him one more time again. And it's just, I was just like, yo, yeah, it's not giving. It's not giving. How did I have a crush on you? <laughs> it was giving one of those ones of like, yo, hi boy, is this the same person? Okay. Moving on to the next section of this uh, podcast, which is... Okay, so do not forget to leave your comment of, your comment down in the comment section. What happened to the most attractive or beautiful person in your school? Leave a comment in the comment section down below. And if you haven't liked yet, what are you waiting for? Don't be that person. Like this video if you're watching on YouTube. And if you're listening to it on a podcast platform please rate this podcast all right so am i the a-hole of the week this is what the story is all about <clears throat> story reads am i the a-hole for not inviting so by the way this video is going to be themed around birthdays just because we are starting a new chapter it's a new birth it's an of our, of our podcast this is uh, most of the stories that we are going to have in this video are going to be centered around birth. So that's the topic of today's. Today's topic is birthdays. Okay, am I the a-hole for not inviting my child-free friend to my twin's birthday party? My 30, sister, 34 male. So my twins turned five this month. They both started school last year and I put them in separate classes as I wanted them to be more independent. When, I, when it came to inviting kids for their birthday, I invited both classes. As at my kids' school, if anyone has a birthday, they will invite the whole class. With some of the parents being kind enough to invite both twins despite one not being in the class. That is so nice. Especially with twins because you do not want... You don't want one twin to feel left out. So I feel like that is so nice that other parents get to do that at the school. That is really nice. Anyways, <clears throat> the guest list was just under 50 kids because of this. The twins are now at an age where they will remember their birthday. So I wanted the guest list to reflect who they would want. Although previously I have invited my friends and their kids to the twins and their kids to the twins birthdays, including Free, uh, uh, including free friends as oh, including child free friends as honorary aunties and uncles. Planning the fifth party was a bigger effort than I thought, and although I originally planned to do it myself at home, I rented a soft play center my kids love. I also invited a few family friends who had kids around my twins' age. But not the child free friends as it was a soft play center and I didn't think it would be fun for them. And I was being charged per person turning up so wanted to cut costs as they wouldn't be using the soft play area. I don't know about that. I know you are trying to cut on budget but I'm just picturing myself in this case. I do not have a kid. So I'm just picturing myself not being able to go to a kid I consider my niece or nephew like I'm an auntie to this child even though I'm not really really an auntie to this child like the fact that I had been counted as an auntie to this child or an uncle to this child and now I'm not able to go to their birthday because I do not have a kid like can I pay for my own entrance fee can I do that I don't know. I know it's more costly on you, but why don't you just charge the people to pay? The, especially the ones without kids, maybe those ones you can charge them to pay to end up. Maybe it wouldn't even be fair. Maybe you can... And like for the other kids, like the kids that go to the same school as your kids, understandable, yes, those ones you pay for. But for your, your friends that want to come, I don't know, maybe it's going to be too full? Or what is the thing? Let, let's just continue reading. I got a call from my child-free friend Lily who mentioned that a mutual friend told her about the twins' birthday and she was upset she wasn't invited as their auntie. I explained to her it was a soft place sender 
and that was a, and that was a kid activity. The twins have their own friends that they wanted and I didn't want them to feel like it was my party. Most of my other child-free friends weren't really that bothered about not being invited, but Lily and a few others said they wanted to be involved. My husband thinks we should throw a family party. Friends invite a, ch uh, a family party. Friends invite the child-free friends to compromise, but to me it seems like an apology when I don't really think we have done anything wrong by not including Lily and other child-free friends. I will apologize if I am in the wrong, but I don't really know how to navigate this as me and my husband are, no, are one of the first in our friends group to have kids. And I guess it was slightly unexpected for them not to be invited as they have been included on every other birthday of the twins and their big milestones. I think I am with your husband on this one. I think I'm, I'm, I'm with your husband on this one. Personally, you could, I, I, I can't say you are the a-hole. You are not an a-hole. No, you are not. It's not. You're not an a-hole. That's all I'm going to say. That, that's the first thing I'm going to say. Is that you're not an a-hole. But I kind of sympathize with your friend. Or maybe also that has to be with my abandonment issues. <laughs> but I can sympathize with your friend. And I kind of agree with what your husband is saying. Oh my goodness. This is not recording. Oh my goodness. This was not recording. I hope this recorded. You see, this is why we keep backups. This is also recording, so thank God for this backup. Thank God for this backup, because this was not recording. Yeah, but I think I, I, I sympathize with, I, I agree with your husband that maybe you should throw another birthday party to invite those people that couldn't go to the small kids birthday or to the first birthday party that you had. Especially because you have already included these people in all these big milestones of your baby and now all of a sudden they are not included. That can feel really lonely. Like it can be painful to someone. I, I, I understand. I sympathize with all of you guys in this situation. But let's see what other people had to say. So someone else said, not the a-hole, but you should be prepared for that, for the fact that Lily and other child-free friends won't be so involved in your kids' lives if you continue to exclude them. Defin that is so true. Like, that is so true. Because if you're not including... If, if you stop including me in your child's important milestones and all those things, it like, I'll just feel like you don't want me in your child's life anymore and I'll just stop putting myself into your child's life because it will start to feel like I am forcing myself into a child's life where the parents don't really consider me that important. So yeah, let's continue reading what this person said. I am not saying they will do it on purpose or out of spite. Yes, that's true. But it's a likely outcome of being excluded from your kid's life. I'm a child-free adult who is an aunt to my friend's kids and I literally flew, uh, and I literally flew, 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 flew. <laughs> From GA to TX for a fifth birthday. I want to be involved in my nieces and nephews' lives and birthday parties. And birthday parties are a way to show that I care about them because kids are about their birthday parties. It's true. That is so true. That is so true. Um, somebody else responded saying, My aunt never had kids, but she was always very involved in my kids' and sisters' lives. Still, even though we are grown adults and now as the even though we are grown adult and now as the child free by choice Andy, I do I do the same with my nieces and a few friends who have babies that I am an honorary auntie too. I do feel like a family birthday party thrown after the fact this year might not be well received if feelings are already had but it is something op should consider for future celebrations yeah that is true yes imagine you were not um invited to the birthday party previously 
and now all of a sudden they're like oh well since you guys were angry about not being able to make it to the other birthday party i'm throwing another family birthday party so you guys can come to that one yeah mm, it's really gonna come off that way so i think like I, I i agree it's better to just let this one go what happened this what it is it happened there's nothing you can do about it now it's too late but for the future maybe plan two birthday parties one for the kids for the school kids and then one for the family that makes a lot of sense so that was it for am i the a-hole of this am i the a-hole now how am i gonna read that one I think I'm going to read this one as did I just read my own confession because it's very relatable. I haven't gone through this exactly, but I know like situations where somebody had me involved in a situation. Like, yeah, I, I can relate to this one. So let me just try to explain it because I'm not going to tell you the story, but I can relate to it a lot. So that's why I'm going to read it as... Did I just read? Did I just read my own confession? Now let's move on to a confession of the week. Confession of this video. What is the confession of this video? <clears throat> confession of this video says, when I was 21, nobody showed up to my birthday party at the bar that I rented out. First off, I am a guy and I still think about this today. Yeah, this, you are definitely going to think about it. Your 21st birthday party and people do not show up to a bar that you rented out. <laughs> That's going to sit with you for the rest of your life. But let's continue reading. It was sort of a low, a low point for me personally. And it makes me... Uh, it was sort of a low point in my life personally. And it makes me worry of the choices I make moving forward backstory back when i was 20 i was pretty popular so i thought i had big groups of friends but not one best friend eh, yeah okay yikes i'm saying yikes because i feel like having a lot of friends is nice and cool and whatnot but you need at least one or two very good best friends close friends because are they really your friends or are they just acquaintances when there are that many and you're not really that close to any one of them? Okay, anyways. I had what I thought great relationships with people and I was the type of guy to be there for you. I was always going out to friends' birthdays, meets up and seeing them before they go out to college etc. Basically, I was a standout guy and was loyal to the bone. If you needed me to pick you up out of jail at 2 in the morning, I will be the guy to call. I had your back. This guy is kind of reminding me a little bit about myself. <laughs> Let me continue reading the story. But I, I feel like I'm that person too. But I, I've grown for, from its sin. So let, let, me just, let me just talk a little bit. Um, I've had a time, a point in my life where I felt like I was putting so much into other people. I was putting so much into relationships. I was attending every friend's birthday. I was contributing to every friend's birthday present. I was doing all of these things for other people and their birthdays or their special moments and their special events. And whenever it was my special moment, special event, anything like that, I like it was just crickets and silence. And really what helped me get over that was just realizing that people are just going to treat you like how they feel like. So do not treat people a certain way or do things for people hoping that they, when your time comes around, they're going to do the same thing for you as well. That is most likely not to happen. So now I know that when I'm doing something for someone I'm doing it because I love them or I genuinely care for them and I genuinely want to do it. I stopped doing things for people with the expectation that I will get something in return. It, it's, just, it's just pointless. It doesn't work out. You end up hurting your own feelings. I just learned that I need to stop having or putting expectations on people and favors that I'm doing for people because then I'm going to be the one that's hurt 
it's gonna be my feelings that are gonna be crushed so i just i just do not do that anymore i just if i do not have the money and you're not that important to me i'm just not gonna do it if i feel like i'm doing this for you expecting that you would do the same thing for me in return then i'm just not gonna do it because 99.9% .9 of the time nobody is gonna do something for you just because you did something for them as well hardly ever most of the time people do things for you because they genuinely like care for you they like you and they appreciate you and that's why they do things for you so yeah i just stopped doing things like that and having expectations let me continue reading so story about the night that night i had reservations from a friend who knew the bar owner they had their own personal bar in the back and they told me I could rent it out for free. I thought, great, this room is pretty big and has enough tables to sit about 35 people. I had personally invited 30 to 40 people a week prior and was excited about the aspect of seeing all of my friends and just getting completely wasted with them. Party was to start at 10, so I decided it's probably a good idea to get there a little late to make an entrance. Oof. okay yeah i mean yeah this is your party if it's starting at 10 if you are arriving at 10 30 that's okay that's that 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 should be fine so around 10 30 i get there music is blasting but the back back room is completely empty the bartender asked me where my friends are and i told them they all must be running late trying to laugh it off with her i stood by the bar staring at my phone I got a couple of texts from people saying they they'd be late or cancelling last minute. Around 11.30, yo, that's an hour later. Yo. 11.30 rolls around, still nobody, and I can see the bartender feeling bad for me, offering me free drinks throughout the night. I felt completely embarrassed and stupid just standing there alone on my birthday thinking I had all these great friends. Yeah, I feel for you, dude. Around 12.30, still nobody. Not one person has texted me since. Around, you were still waiting. 1.15, you were still there. Hey? I tell them to get it. I tell them. So, so around 1.15, I tell them, forget it. I'm going home. The bartender put her hand on my shoulder and told me to forget them and know who my real friends are. I held back my tears standing in the dark empty room feeling drunk and completely humiliated. So many, so many mixed emotions went through my head but mostly embarrassed and betrayed. I went outside and called a cab and cried in the back on my way home. I got to my place and just sat on the bathroom floor for an hour that night crying my eyes out crying my eyes out like a little kid friends asked me about my birthday the following day but didn't even I, I didn't even respond to them the same friends that didn't come to your birthday shower to your birthday party that they were invited to either the ones that are asking you about the birthday the next day you didn't come why do you want to know in fact you stood me up why are you asking me about it i've got an I've gotten over it because I'm 26 now. It's still a hard thing to think about and master. It's really affected the way I've chosen friends to keep close. My trust in people's words have completely been broken unless they have been able to prove unless they have been able to prove otherwise. I really don't expect anything out of anyone and when they do I am caught off guard. It's something I hope nobody ever has to go through. I've never felt more alone than that right that night. Yeah, um fortunately for you it's not not a lot with all not not, not me personally because I've never really had birthday parties like that. I've had one really nice birthday party, my 22nd birthday party, but I've never had a birthday party so <laughs> yeah, but I've had like I said earlier, I've, I I feel you because I've felt what you are feeling before by just showing up for people and people just never really showing up for me 
and um, what I learned from that situation is to never expect anything from anyone and never do things for people expecting that they would do the same thing in return for you. Just do things for people because you like it, because you are enjoying it, because it makes you feel good that you did something good for your friend. That's my motto. That's my, mo my motion, my motive. That's how I do things over here. And let's see what people had to say. Let's read a few comments. So someone said, I think that, believe it or not, more people go through similar situations than you would believe. Sometimes it's a party, sometimes it's a hospital visit, sometimes it's needing bail, whatever it is. People all over the world have really needed people and been let down. It's probably one of the most common feelings in the world. It's good though that you have moved on. Sometimes it takes a long time to do that. I don't think those feelings ever entirely go away, but it's a good it's good that you aren't letting it control your life. Hope you have many much better birthdays ahead of you. Yeah, OP, the original poster actually responded to, to this and they said, Thanks. I'm not sure if I find it comforting that it happens to a lot of people because that feeling just hits you in the gut. It really feels like a step to your gut. That's what it feels like. Um, if I took anything out of this, I just learned to be more humble and be realistic. Plan things better and be more uh, and be more humble and realistic. Oh no, sorry. Plan things better and more importantly, find out who really cares about you. I have a solid group of great friends now and I have had amazing birthdays with just a small group. Couldn't ask for more many things again. Mm-hmm. OP, this has happened to a lot of people. You're not the only one that this has happened to. Someone else responded saying, as a guy who got who got only four texts wishing me, wow, wow. As a guy who only got four texts wishing me, three from my co-workers who I told a day ago on my 21st birthday and nothing else. I totally understand you, bro. I don't know what to eat. I can feel myself breaking down a bit now. I'm 22, turning 23 this year, by the way. Yo. Yeah. Guys, there's just something about birthdays that is, it, it's that it's your moment to take a time, to take the time out of your day, to make people that you like, people that you care about, people that you... People that are close to you, to just make them feel special. And even if the person is not close to you, I'm that person, me. If I see somebody in town and maybe they're buying themselves a birthday cake or they're wearing that thing that's saying it's my birthday or like just something, if something about them is telling me it's their birthday or maybe I had a conversation with someone and they told me it's their birthday that day like, I will be that person to wish them a happy birthday then. Even when they are strange, I'll be like, oh, happy birthday to you. Like, I, I won't obviously have to say, I don't have to say extra things or I wish this for you. Or I want, no, I, I can just simply say happy birthday to you. It's just so nice. It makes a person feel good. And really, there's nothing better about making someone feel good on their birthday it's probably the biggest gift that you can give to someone is make them feel good on a birthday and maybe not even just on their birthdays but if you ever have the opportunity to make somebody feel good about themselves or feel good or lift someone's energy just do it take that you have nothing to lose from doing that for uh you have nothing to lose from doing that for people oh. <laughs> damn man that sucks i waited planning huge birthday party like that for myself just to avoid a situation like this at least you took the chance and it was free also even when i was in a frat in college i didn't think i would have had 40 people i knew well enough to invite to any potential birthday party so at least you had 40 semi friends <laughs> lol OP actually responded to this one i used to be some sort of social butterfly when i was 20 ish I was very friendly with groups of people and made acquaintances quickly. 
at least quickly enough to have a couple of drinks with them or a random hangout. To give some sort of perspective, at the time I had like 1k friends on Facebook. Oh, yeah, that was five years ago. Mm. Facebook was not that lit. 1k friends on Facebook five years ago is not that many. Yeah, yeah, five years. Mm, that was 20. 18 maybe yeah no that was nothing <laughs> but okay um it's sort of like bizarre a bizarre situation everyone knew me around campus but nobody would really do anything for me if i asked ah uh, uh, this is just gonna keep getting set so we're just gonna end that confession there and we are just gonna move on to the last section eh? last part of this video we're going into the last segment that's the word i was looking for last segment and this is unpopular opinion we're gonna let people have their unpopular opinion this is the segment where we let people have their opinion and it's an unpopular opinion so i'm not gonna give my opinion on it because what it's someone else's unpopular opinion and people are allowed to have their unpopular opinions so let's read this unpopular opinion this one reads, getting mad at people for not remembering your birthday is pathetic. I'm not going to say anything. Why? Because we said it's an unpopular opinion and we're going to have... The, 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 the point of this, of this segment of this video is to learn that sometimes you don't have to comment on everything, honey. And I'm using this opportunity to not comment on this because some things... You just don't have to comment on them and it's not your it's someone else's unpopular opinion guys please it's not my opinion i have my opinion i think i made it very clear in the beginning of this video and it goes number one no one is obligated to wish you happy birthday there is no written law number two i don't know why you why <laughs> i don't know why but for some reason telling someone happy birthday feels like an awkward apology It's someone's unpopular opinion, honey. Shut it. Shut it. <laughs> outside, of it uh, outside of it being the day you were born, there's really nothing special about it. What do you mean? What do you mean? What do you mean? What do you mean? <laughs> what do you mean? Does it feel nice to know that people care? Absolutely. Should you be happy when people throw parties and give you gifts? Of course. But don't make people feel like shit for not remembering to celebrate the fact that you are getting old. The only person who should be celebrating you is you. Thank you guys for watching this. If you enjoyed it, or thank you for listening this if you're listening to this as a podcast. If you enjoyed it, please do not forget to give it a huge thumbs up. And before you leave, do not forget to answer today's question of the video. And the question of the video was, what happened to the most attractive person in your high school or college? What happened to that person? Where is that person now, today? Uh, thank you for watching. I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye.